Okay, I think we'll get started. So welcome everyone to the Jumpstart Grad Program Info Night. I uh, really appreciate you all being here. Um, and before we kick off, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country. So Advertising Council Australia acknowledges the traditional owners of the land with which we share and commit to leaving the land in a better place. We pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge their culture of storytelling through art, dance and music. Welcome to the Info Night, as I said, this is the first step to something that is absolutely awesome. I'm super passionate about the program and I really hope that by the end of it, you guys are as excited as I am and that you apply. That's just a small example, a short example of one of the application videos that we received in 2019. Uh, and a really nice example of someone who's now working in the industry. Liz works in Melbourne. She's a junior planner. I think she was actually promoted recently to a planner at one of uh, Melbourne's biggest agencies. Um, and I thought it was a nice way to do a bit of an intro. Uh, so I'd like to join, I'd like to, um, you guys to say hello and welcome our alumni who have joined us tonight. Um, they're actually the graduating class of 2021. Um, and I thought it was fitting to invite them to come along to actually tell you about their journey. So if you guys um, can now show yourselves. The grand reveal. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So we've got um, Christian, Kate, Cameron, Kush, um, who are, uh, as I said, 2021 grads um, and now working in the industry. We will hear a bit more from them later. Um, as we ask them about their experiences. Um, but we're gonna kick off a little um, now with a bit of housekeeping. So um, there are obviously two options um, on Zoom. That's a QA and a and a chat. Um, I'd like, if you have any questions to please drop yours into the Q&A um, because it just makes it easier for me at the end to filter through questions and get them answered. So please feel free to do that. As we go along, drop them in. Bit of an agenda, so about us, um, about Jumpstart. So why are you all here? Um, and you know a bit more about the program. Then we'll have a panel discussion. We'll ask the alumni um, to tell us a bit about their journeys. I'll talk to you about the 2022 application um, and give you some, and myself and the alumni will give you some tips, tricks, and advice for putting your best application forward. And then I'll get into the Q&A section and then some final words of advice from all of us. Um, so we'll kick straight on in. So the Advertising Council is the peak body for Australia's leading advertising agencies. Our purpose is to foster the long-term prosperity of the industry, and our vision is to make advertising the most valued professional services industry in Australia. That's a pretty mean, no mean feat. I mean, we want to be seen in the same professional light as lawyers, architects, and accountants. Um, and long, for, long, for a long time, advertising has been seen less than. So what the Advertising Council does through all our endeavors is to make sure that we're seen in the same professional light as everyone else. Um, and we do that through a number of initiatives. So these are our pillars. So we've got we do people development, which obviously Jumpstart is a part of, um, being a, you know an entry pathway into the industry. But we also continually provide courses for people who are in the industry to upskill. We champion creativity. We have award awards, which stands for the Australasian Writers and Art Directors Awards, and that's the best creative work around Australasia. We demonstrate value through a number of events, webinars, industry reports, uh, lobbying of government, et cetera, et cetera, and really just being there for our members um, to elevate their businesses. Um, and underpinning all of that is our move towards accreditation. So a lot of the professional services that I mentioned have an accreditating system where you continually need to, you know, attend seminars and events and do, you know, courses and stuff to keep your CPD points up. So we are moving towards accreditation as well, because we, again, all to try and achieve our vision of being in the same professional light as the other professional services. This is a national snapshot of our member agencies. I don't expect anyone to remember this, but we have 160 members um, across Australia and we're in all markets. In WA, we have um, the members that you see on your screen now. So um, we've got Rare Market Force uh, 303, 
uh, trilogy, Wonderman, Gay Crasher, and Creative ADM. Um, so we have a real mix there of um, the bigger end of town being the groups, so Market Force, Wonderman, and 303, and then the independents, so Rhea being Perth's largest independent trilogy, and then and marketing as a part of them, Gay Crasher, and Creative ADM. So a really nice mix, and I'm privileged to work with those guys on a regular basis. A bit about me, so I am the state manager. I've probably spoken to and connected with all of you at some stage by email or LinkedIn. So apologies if you felt like I was harassing you, but as I did mention, I'm super passionate about this program. I've got 22 years of, 22 years of experience um, on the client side. So I worked at businesses like Unilever, Mrs. Max, Jester's, and then when I was in South Africa, I worked at the biggest uh, Rainbow. Rainbow was the biggest chicken manufacturer in the country. So. I've always had some kind of food sort of um, history, but in the past three years, I moved over into the agency side. Um, so it has been a wild ride. I've learned lots and I absolutely love being in advertising. Um, and I hope by the end of this presentation, and certainly if you do the program and you graduate, that you'll love being in advertising too. So about Jumpstart. So Jumpstart was started by my predecessor, Danielle Norrish, about nine years ago. Um, and it really is, as I mentioned at the start, to the industry's preferred entry pathway. Um, I get calls from agencies all the time looking for entry level um, grads from Jumpstart that they want you know, to literally just put into jobs because they've gone through such an amazing induction program through Jumpstart. Um, I don't always have those grads to give because we do have a, about an 80 to 90% recruitment. And I think in last year's group, there's almost no one that didn't get some kind of job through Jumpstart or an ancillary contact that they made through Jumpstart. So um, it really is, hence the name, the best way to jumpstart your advertising career. So it's a nine week um, induction program um, and it provides participants with valuable and practical learning and insight into um, WA advertising. Um, the various agencies in Perth and the roles within those agencies um, that would best suit their skills and interests. Um, it really is a unique opportunity. You explore real life agencies, you connect with people, you connect with your peers who are part of your program and you establish really good friendships and connections with them too. Um, and by the end of the program, you will know not only through the roles that you've um, you know, been exposed to, but also the agencies, exactly what job you want and which agency you wanna work at. There are four stages to the program. So stage one is the application stage. Stage two is the speed date. Stage three is the actual agency experiences. And then stage four is the client pitch. I'll talk you through each of those stages, um, but we are gonna spend a little bit more time at the end talking about the application because the application does open at 7 p.m. tonight. Um, and I'm gonna ask the alumni to give you some tips and advice on the application itself. So stage one, the application, there's uh, four questions in a video. And as I mentioned, they open tonight um, at 7 p.m. and they close on the 7th of August at midnight. So you've got about two weeks to get your applications in um, and all applications are judged by participating agencies. The speed date, um, you, so if you're shortlisted from your application, uh, you'll be notified uh, on the 23rd of August. And uh, last year we shortlisted 30 to attend the speed date. And there you really get to meet some participating, well, all of the participating agencies. And you have about seven minutes um, per session with each agency. So it's not a lot of time. They can ask you anything from, you know, why you want to be in the industry, more of an interview style, or they can go really like, you know, left of center and be like, you know, what kind of vegetable would you be if you were to choose to be one or something really random. So, I mean, you are moving into creative advertising space. So just be prepared for anything. Um, and the speed date is on the 30th of August at the Subiaco Hotel. You'll be notified um, once the speed date is done that you're in to the program on the 1st of September and we accept a maximum of 20. So here are a couple of pics from last year's speed date and I suppose I'll open up to the alumni and get you to tell me what your experience was like at the speed date and any advice you want to give. Um, just flick around. I'll start with you, Kush. Um, hello. So my memories from speed dates last year was that they're super full on. Um, and obviously there's like a lot of people that you go through. Um, but yeah, I feel like my recommendations would be like, learn a little bit about the participating agencies, learn a bit about what they do, who they are, and kind of just like know your stuff about the Perth industry. I found really helpful, even though I didn't know all of it about all of them. Um, and definitely kind of like 
be prepared to go and be social and talk to people and just kind of yeah put your best foot forward and have a chat and you know be asked some some easy and some hard questions but it's yeah it's really worthwhile but very full on so just be prepared for it uh anyone else Cam? uh yeah just like Chris said incredibly full on I did all this preparation on my day turns out they didn't ask any questions that I prepared for so just do your general research on each one of the agencies and make sure make sure you know your stuff uh, dress code now that you're in the industry you know what the industry kind of dress is like what would you suggest what would you suggest um i would say don't go super casual but you know we had some people last year rock up incredibly ca casual when they still got through to the end so do whatever, <laughs> whatever you like honestly for girls um, like smart casual kind of cute, <laughs> <laughs> cute. not just jeans and a t-shirt <laughs> and christian and kate anything to add that hasn't been said um, I was just going to say, maybe just, you know, have a bit of a look, just to update, just to up to date, update yourself, sorry, with the industry, like just check campaign brief, like see what, um, you know, the current agencies is kind of like have just launched and what awards they won in the past. Um, do a bit of a search on LinkedIn and their websites, have a look at their core values and all that sort of stuff and just really get to know them um, at the back of your hand. Um, and yeah, I'd say that's probably it. But honestly, just have fun. Like it's a really fun. I honestly, I remember a lot of us after the speed date, a lot of us actually said that we missed it uh, and that we'd do it again because it was so rushed. But it was actually challenging that it was it was fun, if that makes sense. And yeah, there were certainly questions like you know, you'd go from one agency and they'd be like, you know, tell me about this, and then okay, but then the next agency might be like, pick a chocolate and tell me why you would be that chocolate, and it's like what the hell like so some you can't prepare for but some you can so yeah just have fun with it awesome Kate anything to add that hasn't been said um yeah definitely do your homework on each agency because I was the opposite I got nearly every question I studied they asked me so I was happy I did my <laughs> deep dive but um just be yourself relax like I was super nerve-wracking going into it like I did not like this setup. I'd much rather have like an interview one-to-one -one than this big thing. But at the end of it, like Christian said, we had so much fun and we got to meet each other as well. So it was really good. Awesome. Okay. So if you then are the one of the 20 that get shortlisted you and you get asked to, you know, come into the program, this is what the program looks like. So it's nine weeks. Um, you'll do an intro to advertising um, in week one, and that will be at Creative ADM. Then you'll head off to account management um, and that will be at market force. Then week three will be strategy um, and that is at Wonderman Thompson. Um, week four is the creative process and that's with Trilogy. Week five, how agencies make money um, is going to be at Wonderman Thompson. Gavin Bain, who is a very important person that you guys should know. He's also the WA chair for the ad council. So um, he will present on how agencies make money. Um, and then week six is digital. So our WA member agency Rare will present that, but they're inviting Bonfire along to do their session. So that will be really um, cool and exciting. It's one of Perth's best digital agencies. Um, media will be managed by 303. They've got um, a media arm called uh, Media Hub. So they'll be doing media for us, which is really nice. Production, we've got beautiful pictures involved this year um, and they're a production company in Perth um, who do some really good work. And then week nine will be pitch presenting at Gatecrasher. So that's going to be an important session because Tony and the team are actually going to help you uh, put your best foot forward for your final day pitch, which happens three days later. So um, very important that what that one actually gets attended. Don't lose momentum and drop off in week nine because you're going to need that session to arm yourselves for the final pitch. Um, so these are the participating agencies who are involved in the program, as I mentioned. So um, Rare, Wonderman Thompson, Trilogy, Beautiful Pictures, Gay Crasher, Creative Eddie, and Bonfire Mark Force 303. So you guys are in absolute safe hands. Um, these are amazing agencies who are putting their money where their mouth is. They're investing in this program. They're investing with you. You haven't even got into the program yet and they put you know um, dollars behind it. They also invest a heavy amount of resource into the session that they run. Um, and they really are just there to support the industry and nurture talent to, um, coming into the industry, which is vital for the uh, creativity to survive and thrive so i can't be more thankful to them for being a part of this program so at the end of the uh, program you should know essentially um 
you know, how a brief moves from a client and through the key roles within an agency and then becomes, you know, the ad and goes back to the consumer. So um, that's in a nutshell, um, the sort of induction process, if you like. Um, and it's, it, as I mentioned, it's going to be super beneficial for you when you do get a job having gone through that process. Um, you know, you don't have to then be learning on the job and finding out what people are doing and all that kind of thing. Um, and then we've got the client pitch day, which we can't really tell you too much about in terms of the nitty gritty, but um, it is, you get a brief in the morning um, with a client and then you go to an agency and you get broken into groups and you work on the client pitch. Um, and then you come back to an agency and you pitch to the client as well as to some agency heads. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's a pretty intense day. Um, I don't know if you guys want to <laughs> elaborate a little bit more on the client pitch side of things and any advice for people who might get through to that stage. Yeah, um, I mean, like Mel said, can't really say too much, can we? Um, but I suppose one thing that I did the night before is I essentially just went back on everything that I did at uni and pretty much everything advertising. Like, you know, if you guys have files of, you know, inspiration or even Instagram accounts, Facebook accounts or pages you follow on LinkedIn, stuff that you've saved or whatnot, just go through it all. I essentially did everything that I could to make sure that when I woke up in the morning, like everything advertising and marketing related was just fresh in my brain. Um, and have a coffee. If you drink coffee, have a coffee in the morning. It'll do you wonders. Uh, Kate? Um, I'd say it just really work together as a team. Like you think you have a lot of time, but it flies by. So you just got to sit down you know, work with the people around you and your, your lead for the day and have fun. It's, it's a good time. Mm -hmm. Sam? Uh, definitely, 100%. Please make a plan because what happens <laughs> is you're having so much fun with a big team getting together and you're talking about all these crazy ideas and three hours in, you only have like a doodle drawn on a piece of paper. You <laughs> plan when you do it like that. Like I cannot recommend enough, have the whole day planned out and follow it, stick by it. It's not like a uni assignment. It's one day to do this one project and you got to do it. There's no choices. It's really embarrassing if you get up there and you don't have enough to say. And Kush? Um, yeah, very much agree with Kate and Cam, but I don't know. Obviously, Cam was way more organized with his uni assignments than I was because I do all mine today. Um, but yeah, definitely enjoy enjoy your time working with the people that you have around you and like support each other through it. And your time management is absolutely key. Um, and yeah, and just kind of be really appreciative of the agency that you end up with because they are a huge help and kind of utilize the people that they give you to because obviously they've worked in industry for a long time and they are really, really helpful. But yeah, it's a fun day, but yeah, full on. Really good though. Um, and I didn't actually ask at that point, but is there any um, advice you would give them when they're going to each agency each week? Um, you know, advice in terms of the agency experiences, what they um, should look out for, should or shouldn't do. Um, anyone want to say anything about that? Yes, if I can, please make it your goal to just talk to everybody. You know, don't sit in the corner, go speak to everybody that business be embarrassed and ask for business cards. People love that for whatever reason. Just talk to everybody you possibly can. Great. Uh, anyone else want to add anything? Yeah, very much agree with Cam. And just enjoy it, make the most of it and be, yeah, really appreciative of the opportunity because obviously like working in industry is super busy and these people take the time out. So you like learn as much as you can and definitely speak to as many people, 100% agree as you can. Um, and just get to know them. Like it doesn't even have to be about the industry as such like if you end up there having drinks after the presentation like talk to them as people and get to know them and about them because especially in Perth like the industry is so much about connections and like forming friendships and stuff with people so yeah just make the most of it awesome and yeah, my advice I, is um sorry connect in LinkedIn connect with the people who you meet um because they are going to become important in fact if you don't have a LinkedIn you should before you start the program and then connect with people that you meet so yeah um christian yeah and i was just going to say like fully agree with kush as well like if there's anything that i learned through the program going through each agency is just to be yourself like you know you might have taken units at uni or there you know might have been a lot of stuff that you've come across online or whatnot on how to like be professional and 
what you need to include on your resume and, and all this sort of like, you know, professionalism related stuff, but kind of just drop that, like learn from it, but drop it and just be yourself because I think really that's what this industry is about. Like if there's anything that I learned, it's that the agencies sort of gravitate towards yourself, like you as a person, because, you know, there's only one you. So just take advantage of that. Right. Good advice. Uh, okay, so, and then we go off to graduation dinner. So most of you probably won't eat during the day. <laughs> um, we do provide food, but if you don't eat in the day, we go out and we celebrate. And that is the end of the program. And it wraps up with people who you've met uh, throughout the agency sessions, get invited to come along. And again, in a nice social setting, as Chris said, you get to chat as people and get to, you know, um, have a drink and really celebrate a very stressful day, but hopefully a very um, successful program. So now we'll move into a bit of the panel discussion. Um, so I'll um, again ask you guys to just talk a little bit about um, you know who you are, um, what you studied and where, um, where you work now, um, and why you decided to jumpstart, and then what you gained or learned the most out of the program. I'll keep these up if you need them as prompts. Um, but we'll start with um, Cam. Yeah, so obviously I'm Cameron, Cameron Patterson. Uh, I studied marketing and management through uni, but I would have switched about four times. I'm sure lots of you are in the exact same boat. Uh, I currently work at Bonfire. I'm a digital marketing manager there. So I got given about 15 accounts a couple of months ago and that's slowly been brought up. Um, so why did I decide to do Jumpstart? Well, I'd done two internships and I didn't get job offers out of any of them. I had no idea where to go from there. Uni really doesn't help you in the next phase of getting a job, at least my university didn't. So met, uh, one of my lecturers, his name was Mr. Gong uh, <laughs> at ECU, if anyone's got him, he's in marketing. And he pointed me towards here and I filled out the whole thing in one night and handed it in. And then what did I learn the most? Probably that hmm, really gave me insight into the industry itself. Like, although I liked the idea of marketing, I didn't really understand that marketing is a whole toolkit and there's hundreds of different tools in it. Right. And there's so many different avenues you can go in. You can go in digital, you can be a creative, you can go into strategy. There's so many aspects. Really taught me, um, really helped me teach myself what I wanted to do, you know, what avenue I wanted to go down. So jumpstart, best thing I've done for my career, and it probably will be for yours as well. Right. Thank you. Uh, Kate. My name's Kate. Um, I studied marketing and advertising at Curtin and I now got a job at a jumpstart at Wonderman Thompson as an account exec. Um, I, I wasn't tossing up to do jumpstart, but Steve Dix, one of my tutors, um, he told me about it and I was quite busy at the time coming to the end of the semester, but decided to do it quite last minute and it's probably the best thing I've ever done for my career, for my studies, for like even friendships and connections with people. It's just set me up. Um, I don't know what I'd do without it. So definitely glad I did it, even though last minute. Um, don't recommend it. Definitely use your time to plan those um, questions and videos, but it's, it's, it's very, very helpful. Um, what I gained, probably the connections um, with all the agency heads, but also this group here, we all connect all the time. We all talk about our agency life and yeah, we just help each other through, through it all. So it's good. Thank you. Um, Christian? Hi, uh, I'm Christian. I studied at Curtin University. I just did a um, sole major in advertising. Um, so that was fun. I actually started off in accounting and finance. So that's, <laughs> that's quite a switch because I didn't know what to do. Um, where do I work? So I work at 303 Mullen Lou as a junior planner. Um, so planning is, yeah, strategy kind of gets mixed up, but they're essentially the same as far as I know. Um, why I decided to do Jumpstart, I just, I, I guess I had heard good things and I liked how, um, you know, like Cam said, he did two internships and didn't really get much out of it. Like Jumpstart kind of just, I, I you know, from previous friends that had done it, uh, I heard that they were just taken seriously and they got that exposure. So it's like, even if, um, you know, you didn't get in, for example, the speed date is still so valuable because you get that exposure face to face. Um, and from there, you know, you're no, you know that you're, you're being taken seriously. 
Um, so yeah, I just thought that was a good sort of jump start, like Mel said, Mel said into um, to get into the industry. Uh, and what did I do? What did I gain the most? Um, apart from the exposure, I suppose. Hmm. I suppose like we got to see how each agency like actually functions. And what was the most interesting thing to me is that none of them work in the same way. They all have different ways of doing things and they actually work together. Um, so you might think that it's quite competitive, which it is like, you know, I'm sure it is, but at the same time, they all work with each other and everyone's really friendly with each other. Um, and that was really cool to see um, just to see how, you know, and, and, and the good thing is when you, when you are exposed to that, like you come out and you can use, you can sort of utilize how each of these agencies are working differently and you can use that with your own work, um, which was really cool. So, yeah. Awesome. And last but not least, Kush. Um, so I'm Kush. I studied creative advertising and graphic design at Curtin. Um, I actually now work at Trilogy as an account coordinator, which is not where I thought I'd be, but I'm very happy there. Um, why I decided to do Jumpstart was because I actually stumbled upon a conversation with a girl who I just met talking about, Hey, how are you? Do, like, how are you? What do you do? Where are you from? Um, and she recommended Jumpstart to me when I was in my final semester of uni, um, or like thereabouts had just finished somewhere around there. Um, and I decided to look into it cause it sounded really interesting, um, and it was probably like everyone else has said, one of the best things I've ever done for my career in terms of getting that head start and meeting people and connections and very much agree with what Christian said, people actually taking you seriously as well. Um, and I think what I gained and learned most from Jumpstart was the connection. So not only like meeting the people in industry, but also like Kate's making friends. And these are the people who you were all working in industry now, like just starting out and be in 20 years time, like we will be running this place together. So they're really valuable friendships to form. And it's a really great support network because you're all going through it together. Um, and very much agree with what Christian said as well, like working out how each individual agency works and the kind of people that are there and what fits for you and what doesn't and so you kind of get the sense like when you're going into an agency like the way that they work the kind of people that are there their culture and how it fits with you and you can kind of find your niche amongst that because obviously so many agencies in Perth but they're all very individual in what they do and whatnot so finding your match for them as well was really really valuable too that's awesome I think that's a it's got to be a mutually beneficial Can I say one more thing? relationship. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say as well, in terms of why I decided to do Jumpstart, and I think you guys would agree as well, it's that, you know, I had heard in my time at uni that it's hard to get into the advertising industry. So when I found out about Jumpstart and the Advertising Council Australia, to me, I was like, well, the advertising industry literally goes to this Jumpstart program to seek out new hires. So in my head, I was like, well, kind of makes sense to just go for it you know what I mean like we're a grad so yeah sorry awesome thanks guys um there are a few questions in Q&A so keep asking them to the participants and we will get to them at the end um so the application for 2022 so are uh, we uh, as I mentioned are going to go through the actual questions um shortly they are the same questions that these guys completed last year. So they are going to provide you with a little bit of advice about answering the questions and also having now worked in the industry for some time, um, you know, some pitfalls and things potentially not to do in your applications might be helpful. Um, so the first is um, pick an ad. Um, question one, tell us about an interesting ad campaign currently in the market and give reasons why you think it's good or bad. So here we're really asking you to critique an ad, um, but you know we want to see your thinking behind why you think it's good or bad. Um, any kind of suggestions or advice from the panel in answering this baby? I, when I answered mine, I found it really helpful to pick an ad if you can find one that sort of has a bit of purpose as to why you want to work in the advertising industry. Um, so say, for example, something that is maybe like a behavior change ad that you felt moved by. And so you can actually speak with real, like real honesty about it behind it and be like, yeah, like I love this ad because it does this. And that's why, like it's inspired me. And that's why I want to work in this industry would be my advice on it. 
Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with Kush as well on that. Like, you know, you, you can either go one or two ways. Like you can, I guess, throw out your personal opinion and, and why you love a particular ad in terms of like the front of the ad. Like, oh, I really like, I don't know, that dog with a lightsaber, you know what I mean? Like, but I guess you kind of, you want to dive deeper. Like what's the sort of truth behind that? Like, what are they really getting across? And especially what Kush is talking about behavior change, like really just like, think about the ad and watch it and look at the campaign, look how it did. Um, if it's an older campaign or, or whatnot, oh, it's currently in the market. So, um, but yeah, actually think about it and, and think about it for a few nights and really try and look behind it, what they're trying to actually say, as opposed to just the front of it. Um, and it's probably important as well when you're answering this ad, if you do decide to pick a bad ad and, and, you know, give it a terrible critique to make sure that it isn't an ad by one of the participating agencies who um, will be judging you because that's probably not a good thing to do. Uh, also look at things like um, whether it won any awards or um, in contention for winning any awards. Um, so really do a little bit of homework about the ad as well, which agency or what, like develop the ad, like that kind of stuff. So okay. yeah, that's question. Um, yeah. So and if you really want a little tip, uh, the agencies love it when you pick an ad they had slain to do with. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay good idea um uh, question two your personal brand so um if you were a brand what brand would you be and why so this is kind of a common um i suppose interview question um so there isn't a right or wrong but again we're just wanting to see you know what values that particular brand stands for that you can resonate with um and that you believe you know talks um about you as a person um any advice from the panel maybe kate um, similar to how Kush said in the first one, um, mine kind of all intertwined, but this one I kind of deep, dug deep with and it wasn't just what their external like values and stuff was. It was really like, without giving too much away of my one, but it was like supply chain treatment of workers, like stuff like that, go into it and deep dive, be creative about it. Um, and just your personal brand in general, like that comes down to you. You have to put in that work to see um, what your personal brand is and that's going to stand to you past way past jump start so put in the time and effort now yeah I really agree with what Kate said and also like think about it because I feel like it's really easy at face value to pick a brand that you want to be that like would be your ideal as opposed to a brand that you actually are so you might think that you would like to aspire to be some massive flashy brand like Nike, but you might also at the moment just be like a small local Western Australian sneaker brand instead. So really have a think about like, yeah, like the deeper value of it. Great um, advice. Question two, uh, this one is a trickier one that we included last year for the first time. We got some really interesting answers, um, but it's explain advertising to an eight-year-old. Um, and here we're really interested in your understanding or definition of what advertising is and whether you can explain this quite simply and clearly to someone who's younger and doesn't know what it is. Um, any advice on this one for the participants? Um, definitely use analogies. What do you what do you say? Talk, how do you talk to younger kids? You <laughs> use analogies. They don't understand basic stuff. So use the best and most creative analogy you can and um, make sure it's not super basic to what I can say. Um, there were quite a few people last year who used um, actions um, or drawings or props. So they said, you know, I would get a teddy bear and I would tell it that it was doing such and such a thing. So you can explain that you're going to be doing some kind of action or draw something that you think is going to be the best way to explain advertising. So really it's open to interpretation. Yeah, I was just going to say as well, like, um, if there's anything that comes to mind here, and I guess what what helped when I answered this question is, um, you know, that kids, they have a very different mindset to us, like their imagination is fresh, it's open, like the world is is always like 24 seven fun, like they have a crazy, you know, crazy mind that's always running. So I guess um, you know, if you have any like sort of like younger family members or cousins or, or whatever, even just like talk to them and just kind of think about how you would explain advertising in their world. Um, there was something that someone said to me a long time ago where they were like stuck on a creative brief and it was something that 
their like sister's kid had said um, about a particular product that triggered like the insight that was then the campaign. So it's like, just try and get in their shoes and be empathetic. Um, yeah. Awesome, I like that. And also um, the definition, the Latin definition of advertising is to turn the attention. So if you can think about that as the purest definition of advertising, you can have quite a lot of fun and play with that. So, um, so question four, three pieces of advice you would give your younger self. So, you know, rather than you going into an interview and like, tell us a little bit about yourself, this is just a way of us trying to um, get, a, get to know a little bit of your life experiences and some of the lessons that you've learned along the way. Um, and so just be your authentic self and answer this, um, you know, really as, as best you can about what you've been through. And, you know, if you could go back in time, what would you tell yourself um, then? Anyone else want to add anything? Yeah, I think this question sort of really speaks to, you know, going back on how I was saying, and some of us are saying as well, like, just to be yourself, like, this question is irrespective of, um, of advertising and your interest to that. I mean, you sh I'm sure you could somehow creatively like tie it in with that, sure. Um, but mm -hmm. for me, when I answered this question, I really just disconnected myself for that. And I tried to, I just didn't sell. I just spoke authentically and properly about myself as if it was a blog, you know what I mean? Or a message to a mate after yeah, a couple of beers on a night. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Very much agree with Christian in that sense. It's yeah, it's like a nice opportunity to remove yourself and really humanize like you as a candidate sort of thing and pick like different pieces of advice. So maybe like life advice or career advice or then like a fun advice thing or like always keep chocolate in the cupboard or, you know, like random little do like diff like yeah, like a few different ones that gives a good insight into you. Mm, that's awesome. But definitely be vulnerable. It's hard with this one, but it, it says a lot more than yeah, being cliche. Mm. great uh thank you uh and then the last question is the video so you saw the example video um in the first slide first few slides and it's still sell, basically sell yourself in 45 seconds but here you really do have an opportunity to show us a bit of your personality um and convince us why you really want this opportunity um you don't have to be creative you don't need to have the most you know well-produced video you can literally talk to your phone but bearing in mind that the judges are judging a lot of applications and yours does need to make impact and stand out. Um, so just try and err on the side of not being too boring because um, it's just going to, you know, lend, lend your application to not being successful. Um, I can't remember what your guys' videos were, but if anyone wants to share what they did for applications, um, you can do so now. Yeah. Mine was terrible. I don't know how I got through, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it was just me sitting in front of the camera. So don't do that. Just be a little, just be a little bit creative. Be fun. Um, show that there's you, you have some sort of personality because a lot of the time, that's what these agencies are actually looking for, like someone who has personality and that will actually fit into their mold that they want to build out of you. I remember for mine, I was like, 45 seconds is such a short time and I often have a lot to say. <laughs> Um, and so I'm panicking. So what I did, I used some props and stuff in mine because obviously like 45 seconds to sell yourself. It's not just you in the video. Like I remember I had like a bottle of wine next to me and a coffee cup and like all these different little assets that was still like tiny insights into me, but they weren't necessarily blaringly obvious, but people could still gain like extra bits. So if you want to squish more in, that's how I did mine. <laughs> I won't talk to mine because I'm like Cam and I, mine was so boring. It was just talking to a phone. But one of our mates who stood out to me when I watched hers later on, it said so much about her. It was her riding around on her skateboard with like a glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that just fully, like she didn't even have to talk. It was just Beth in a video and it says so much. So really think how you can showcase you in a yeah, nice, simple way. Don't hurt, don't crash. And yeah. Don't just, so we're it. condoning yeah. so much alcohol consumption, but. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Beth's as well, it was so yeah. good. It's she like, she, she was she just, taught, hey. She yeah. taught herself. I'm she Beth. Herself. Yeah. yeah. And she's like currently teaching myself to skate with a glass of wine, but don't judge me on that. Like she was really yeah, fun awesome. with it, um, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. kind of leads me on to say like, don't script it. Just kind of, I mean, sure, you can have bullet points if you want, if you're super organized. Um, but don't feel like, you know, your response to each of the questions has to be, um, sorry, not questions, just like, yeah, don't plan it, don't plan it, but do plan it also. So that's not great advice. Um, 
it's a it's a it's a tough one it's just like be yourself and have fun and if there's anything i have to say is that before you submit it watch it several times over and even maybe get your family or friends or dog or cat or whatever to watch it and if there is if you hit a point where it's like oh you're kind of losing me then go back and add something silly or something fun or a really slow transition or something that's going to like keep the attention to be like what the hell is this person doing but you know it's there to keep their attention. Good advice. And also from a technical point of view, um, we ask that you upload it to Vimeo and that you make it, um, if it's password protected to provide your password and you wouldn't believe how many people last year I had to contact and say your video is not working. So please just check, 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 check your technical stuff before you submit it. The other thing about applications is the system that you guys apply on um, is our sort of CRM system. I would highly recommend that you type your answers into a document and then copy and paste them into the answer fields on the application because sometimes there can be a glitch and doesn't work that well. Um, so just do that as a safeguard. Um, so just as a bit of another bit of a technical advice. Okay, so thanks guys. So we got a few questions in the Q and A, um, which I'll run through now if it lets me. Uh, won't let me for some bizarre reason, more chat. How many hours would you need to dedicate every Tuesday? Um, so the Tuesday pan, um, agency sessions are usually from three to six, so three hours. Um, there are sometimes an anomaly of about four to seven, so it's three hours on a Tuesday. It's not fully like sitting, like watching a presentation. It's usually, the format is usually a bit of a, an agency talk, um, you know, and then a bit of a, a tour. They present their topic um, to you. Sometimes they get you to do a bit of an activity, like a workshop, um, either as an individual or a group. And then there's always drinks and networking at the end with either the um, people who are running the session or with, um, you know, people who are outside of the agents, but like in the agency, they come in and join. So really good opportunity to, um, yeah, to network at that stage. Okay, cool. Um, anyone else want to say anything about the time on Tuesdays? I can't for some reason see these questions, which is super annoying. I've got them, I've got them here if you want me to read oh, them can out. Can you open them? I can't for some reason. Can you read a few? Yeah, so you've got all anonymous. Um, yeah. How many applications on average do you have for the Jumpstart program? So last year we received uh, 55 applications. The year before, probably about 65. That was the first year that I did jump start. Um, so around 60, I would say, is pretty average. Um, so we cull about half to get to the speed date. Um, and then obviously another 10 who could then go through the program. And then you've got, do we only have one chance to win or is there a chance to apply again next year? Uh, you can apply as many times as you want. Um, we're not ageist in the industry. You get through on the strength of your own application. So if you apply, apply, apply and don't get in, you can keep applying. I'm in my final semester at uni. Did anyone juggle the end of the uni semester with the Jumpstart program, especially if it clashed with uni days? People yes. did um, do that. I mean, you guys can talk about it, but I remember the final day client pitch, I had to email Electra because there was an exam for someone on that final day and then they got a um, deferred date. So it does happen quite often. Cameron, you have the same experience? Yeah, I'd say more than half the people in our group were still yeah. at the time. Most people like literally in their last semester or they've just graduated. So yes, yeah. if it clashes with uni days, just go to it. This would be a lot more worth than one of your last units at uni, I can tell you right now. So just move stuff around and, you know, you'll find time for it. Great. Thank you. Definitely just talk to your lecturers and tutors because I was in that situation with Sarah. We had our exam on the last final day and a few other times stuff came up. They're really understanding most of the time and make sure you allow time for your networking and stay at the end and talk to people. Don't try and rush yourself because it's, it's really worth it though, that time. And I am always um, there to speak to your lecturers and stuff as well and send you a letter and a recommendation and all that stuff. So just reach out. Does the personal brand require to be selling a product or service? Uh, no. The personal brand question. 
No, it just has to be a mark, like a brand that's, you know, um, that stands for something. It doesn't have to be selling necessarily. Um, so I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it, I suppose it's it's more so about what the brand believes in and its values and like, what do you feel when you watch one of their ads? That's mm. kind of what it more is about, yeah. I would say. Um, what are some, re oh, just glitched. What are some relevant info we should include in the video? Nothing relevant, like we just, like we've said, have some fun with it, show your own authentic self. Um, there's nothing, there's no predetermined set of criteria that need to be included. Um, so just, just roll with it. Do you have to have a strong advertising marketing background in order to participate? No, I wouldn't say so. In fact, um, one of the big issues in advertising is um, trying to get, you know, diverse thinking and people from, you know, diverse backgrounds to come into the industry because it's through diversity that we really do deliver better creative. So we like to think that, you know, anyone can be in advertising and you can come and bring your rich, you know, laugh lessons and, you know, different kind of thinking into our industry. And that's only going to benefit us in the long term. Um, one of the creative directors from Rare actually studied engineering um, and she's now creative director at Rare. So you can do anything and still come into advertising and be hugely successful. Yeah, yeah. I found the whole industry about very similar to that. Oh, so loads of people at my agency, I would say less than half of them actually have a background in marketing. They all got through it through the sheer diverse, <laughs> diversity. There's, there's mining engineers that work at, um, at Bonfire. So I wouldn't say you need a marketing background. No. Um, Centane says, what was the hardest part of Jumpstart? Mm, that's a good question. That is a good question. Mm. Um, <laughs> honestly, most of it was very enjoyable. Free pizza, you know. <laughs> um, no, hardest part. I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think? I mean, I, can... I really enjoyed it. The pitch day would probably have to be yeah. the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. was yeah because like the sessions aren't hard because you're like you're literally just learning and you're getting the opportunity to speak to people and stuff so that's like the easiest thing ever and it's such a blessing um mm. but yeah definitely the pitch day because it's all of a sudden like you've got this real life pressure and you've got to get a good idea and you've got to pitch something to people so it's hard but it's it's very worthwhile when you learn a lot so yeah it's good though oh uh sorry it's just glitching will the courses be conducted online or in venues uh in venues we wouldn't if we had to move to or like move back to COVID from two years ago we didn't actually run jumpstart in 2020 because the benefit of jumpstart is the in agency experiences and the meeting of people so it is never going to work online so it will always be at a venue i'm in my second year of uni am i still eligible to apply you can apply, but you are likely to be offered a job at the end. And so I would say you're probably better placed to apply in your final year. Um, advice for introverts and shy people with networking. Um, listening is always a good skill. Um, you know, listening to other people and then really taking the time to absorb and then respond. You don't have to be the person, you know, talking the hind leg of the donkey and asking all the questions. But if you can spend some time really truly listening to people um, and then, you know, answering questions relative to what they've just said, I think you can make an impact, um, quite a mm -hmm. soft impact. Um, any of you kind of fit into that category? Not super extroverted, but. Yeah, I, I would, I would say like, you know, um, don't feel intimidated by the ones who throw themselves, you know, at the agency's um, staff or whatnot. Cause you know, you might have nights where you, you might feel a bit introverted or you might feel a bit intimidated because you know, they can, it can get very loud and whatnot, but um, you'll, you'll find people of that, of each agency, um, maybe not every agency, but you'll also find people that will listen to you and like, will be on your same sort of level. So, um, don't worry about, I mean, the other, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of push yourself to not be who you are. Like you'll definitely find your fit. And like Mel said, like listening is actually a lot more powerful than jumping in to, to tell them all about you and, and whatnot. So, yeah. And I think um, what always amazes me on the client pitch day is that people who have been sort of flying under the radar and who have not really 
had a lot of interaction with or noticed just as super blow me away and impress me like because I'm mm. like wow I did not believe that person because there's a difference between like you say being super like you know out there as opposed to having sort of clarity of thought and expression and I think the final day is really an opportunity for the introverts to you know be come come to their own yes that you know they may not feel comfortable but I've never seen anyone sort of really falter um, everyone has always super succeeded um, and really like um, pushed their boundaries, but also exceeded our expectations. So um, yeah. I don't say put it off. It's, the agency is made up of a mix of people, introverts, extroverts, and everyone has a role to play. And I also say that Jumpstart, although it is for getting into advertising, it's also like a networking course in itself because you learn how to talk to everybody within the industry. Like Mel will push you towards other people if you're not saying anything. So you don't have to worry about that. And <laughs> You know, uh, of course, it's hard for me to say, just don't be nervous, but make a friend and go do it with somebody else. That's a good, that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. Um, so do many people finish Jumpstart and go into award school? I was initially told that Jumpstart would help you prepare for award school. Yes, that's I've got great examples. Um, so the girl at the beginning of the video, Liz Graydon, who's a planner in Melbourne, she did jumpstart first, then she did award school and she won in WA and she's a planner in Melbourne. Um, in 2019, Ollie um, was 25. She was a teacher. She decided she wanted to change and she wanted to be in advertising. So she did jumpstart. Um, she was quickly recognized as being someone who was creative. Um, and so like you had really interesting conversations, made really good connections with people. She got an internship at Meerkats um, and then she did award school uh, the following year and she won WA, but then she also won national and she um, went on to work at MNC Saatchi in Sydney and she now works at the Monkeys in Melbourne. So yes, award school is if you're, absolutely intent on being a copywriter and art director but um, I've had so many people who have done both and said that they would then some people say they much preferred the award thing because it teaches you idea ideation and creativity but others who have said they really love the networking opportunity and really getting in front of the right people which award school does allow to an extent but jumpstart is just like next level so they kind of like have a nice symbiosis going um, you've just got two that have come through as well. So is there any cost involved in the program and will there be job placements after the course? Um, there's no cost for students. There was last year we did a placement um, because we were concerned at the time that people would pull out of the program and leave us with vacant spots. But the agencies came together this year and we're like, let's just, times are tough. Let's just let the students in. Um, and if there's spots vacant, then we can try and fill them with sort of reserve people. So there's no cost to the student. The agencies pay to be part of it. Um, and there's no guaranteed jobs at the end of Jumpstart. You do get in on the strength of your own application and you do get a job on the strength of how you networked, um, met with people, conducted yourself, et cetera, et cetera. So if you do all that, you know, take the advice that you've heard tonight on board and you do everything to the best of your ability, I'm confident that you would get a job, but there's no guarantee. Yep. Sorry, there's just two more in the oh, yeah. ch chat. Um, so for the video, if we use a song for the background music that is copyrighted, will Vimeo mute the audio? Mm, I, I'm not 100% sure on that. I can't say. Um, I think I have seen videos with music in the background. Um, I can't, I don't know. I'll have to look that up and um, send me an email, Melissa at adcouncil.org.au and I'll look, I'll look at that, I'm not sure. Uh, and then you've got the last one here. For the brand question, do you need to actually describe a real life brand, for example, Nike, or can you make one up? Um, I guess you can make one up. It's just, it's gonna be harder. I mean, that would be really interesting and a very creative thing to do. I don't think anyone has done that. Um, so your application would stand out, but the there is a word limit. And so you would have um, to ensure that you articulated everything that the brand stood for quite clearly um, and why it is, you know, the brand for you in the word limit. So um, you can do that if you like, it would be interesting. So yeah. Won't be making it easy on yourself, though. What? <laughs> Won't be making it easy on yourself, but no. On. But you can, yeah. Um. So you, that's you what, could also. Oh, yeah. sorry. I was going to say you could also 
take a backwards approach and, you know, instead of picking like a massive or like well-known brand or, you know, an interesting brand, you could be like Oz post because they're everywhere or something. I don't know, like get fun with it, but I, I would probably say do go with a brand. Um, but yeah, yeah, just be fun. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, so we are wrapping up. We've got two minutes to go. We've given you a lot of advice, so we will, um, skip this page. Um, applications, as I said, they're now open once we, finish this webinar, I'm going to click the button. And then if you go to our website um, and you click on courses, add school, and then you find jumpstart, the applications will be open. Um, I don't expect any to come in in a hurry because I do expect you to put some time and effort into your answers. Um, and they close at midnight on the 7th of August. So from the panel, so I'd like to thank you guys, um, Kush, Cam, Kate, and Christian. I don't know, like all the C's and the K's, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a subconscious thing. Thank you so much for joining, uh, for your words of advice, um, and for taking the time out to chat to tonight's participants. Um, wishing from them to you guys, for those who are applying and do think Jumpstart is for you, and the best of luck for, from the 2021 graduating class. Thanks. Awesome. Good luck, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.